Early voting begins in the town of Barnstable and 20 industrialists from China traveled to Plymouth to learn more about Cape Cod Community College's aviation program. We have details on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, October 24th, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Residents can now take advantage of early voting, and many did today, as we found out this morning. Early voting has begun here at Barnstable Town Hall, and as you can see behind me, many residents are taking advantage of it. Let's hear more about this with Town Clerk Ann Quirk. So, a huge turnout already for early voting. This is the first day that it's available. Did you expect this big of a turnout? No, I did not, but I didn't really know what to expect. And look at this, we're, we're crazy busy, it's wonderful. Now, when everyone that's counting or, or voting today, when will those ballots be counted? Thank you. They'll be counted on election day, just like the absentee ballots, they will be looked at and put through the tabulator on election day. Now, I'm really interested to see, and I can't wait till after the election, and we can talk a little bit more about how the results went. I'm interested to see, do you think that early voting will increase turnout, or do you think that the, it, the numbers will stay the same? You know, that's a great question, and I'm honestly hoping that that is what's going to happen, that we'll have a, a higher turnout. But I, we don't know what to base it on. I can tell you that normally by this time we have many more absentee ballots than we do this year because people were waiting for early voting. So we'll have to see how that all pans out. What made you want to come out and vote early today? I've got to get this painful process over with. I can't stand it another day. <laughs> you just wanted to put it behind you. Oh, please. <laughs> you, this is your first time voting? It is, yeah. Are you very excited about it? I am. And what made you want to come out today for early voting? Um, I signed up for an absentee, but I no longer needed it, so I want to make sure I can vote without any issue. What made you want to come out today and vote early? Oh, I've always been a political junkie. I was a political science major. I've never missed an election. And any reason you wanted to come vote early today or just? Yeah, you know, life gets busy, and I just didn't want to have an excuse not to vote. industrialists from China traveled to Plymouth to check out Cape Cod Community College's aviation technology program. Communications Director Michael Gross says the visit was a good People one. People wouldn't necessarily think of uh, using our facility as a place to, to look at state-of-the-art training, uh, but in fact, uh, we've been very lucky to partner with an organization that brings groups from around the world over here to America or when we might have a, a large corporate partner, maybe let's say somebody like General Motors opens a plant uh, in another part of the world, they need to have all of their employees trained in the processes there and in language and things. There's a, there's a company called Global Corporate College, which partners with educators there or here and puts together the training program and acts as the facilitator and organizer. And in fact, what happened uh, this past week is 20 industrialists from mainland China. And these are people who are part of the, the companies that are owned by the, the mainland Chinese government, but they run manufacturing facilities in which different types of welding go on, and they need to be able to train their workers. And what's interesting is that in our aviation maintenance facility training up there in Plymouth is a state-of-the-art uh, virtual welding facility and, and, and a welding station in which you put on a welding hood, but in that is a virtual uh, visual uh, device, and then you put the welding torch, but it, it feels like a torch, in your hand, 
And we have some images there that people can see. And literally, you can feel it. it it's three-dimensional. You then have a, a piece of, of wood and plastic that, that you actually, as if you were welding a joint and literally work on it, and it can be programmed to show you how you might be working on different materials, and it's very, very realistic. And in fact, the the welding torch in your hand gets hot if you're taking too long, and it is amazing. It really is quite something. And in fact, uh, during the, the training, we had uh, one of the manufacturer's reps there with us to help them see this particular device. And it was one of the real state-of-the-art types of, of materials and uh, things that they were able to see right there here. And it, <laughs> there is an interesting part of all of this. One of the, uh, the reps said to uh, uh, the manufacturer, uh, one of the uh, delegates from China said, well, well this, is, this is really something. We should have this over in our country. And uh, they said, well, how much does this cost? And the rep said, well, uh, each one of these is about $20,000. There was dead silence in the room. Wow. And, and, and a very palpable, <gasps> as, as you could hear them say, oh, my goodness, they, they, they couldn't imagine. And yet that really is an amazing tool and that our students think of this. We have a full cohort of students training in Plymouth right now. And there's another full cohort coming in January, and they are able to learn on something that is phenomenal and something that these industrialists really would love to have had, and maybe they might be able to convince their government to, give, to bring to them in China. Um, interesting, it, was, it wasn't all quite uh, work, if you will. Uh, they went through our facility, and they uh, all of a sudden encountered uh, one of our airplanes that our students uh, work on. Everybody had to become a pilot for a moment. Of course. And they, <laughs> and they jumped in, and everybody, of course, had to take pictures. And then what is interesting, you come around a corner, and next to this, this airplane is an engine that is the size of that airplane. Wow. Uh, there's a massive Pratt & Whitney jet engine that, in fact, powers... Uh, the big 737s and, and the massive jets that our students in their next phase of training, in fact, will learn how to repair, how to run. Uh, the the uh, industrialists and, and workers were fascinated. They, they, they just couldn't imagine this. Uh, and the, uh, the, the ubiquitous cell phone photo, uh, uh, the, you saw cell phones everywhere. Everybody had to have a picture of everything. And and they were there with this engine and, and taking huge pictures of it. it. It really was quite something because here are our students, of course, are right in the middle of, of their classes, and, and they did not engage uh, with these individuals too much because, frankly, they have to stay on task. Uh, the FAA certification process is so strict uh, that they didn't get much chance to discuss things uh, with the, uh, the Chinese who were there. Uh, but, in fact, uh, as they went through, uh, they, they could see. And, and, in fact, I think maybe part of what was a, a good thing for the mainland Chinese was to see how focused the instruction was, uh, that uh, they were there, but our students were there to learn and, and not to so kind of socialize. And you can learn more about the aviation technology program at Cape Cod Community College by visiting capecod.edu. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with DPW Director Dan Santos. We'll have our board, committee, and commission roundup. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.